Hello and welcome to Badger Talks Live, which brings exciting happenings, resources, and talent from your UW flagship campus to the people of Wisconsin and beyond. I am Marissa Feller, a rising senior studying sociology and history in the College of Letters and Science. Today, it is my pleasure to introduce UW Vilas Distinguished Achievement Professor, Alfonso Morales, who will be talking about marketplaces, farmers markets, flea markets, and the like their history and their future in times of uncertainty. Alfonso Morales is originally from New Mexico and his family has farmed and ranched for more than 100 years. He is the founder and director of the Kaufman Lab and or the Kaufman Lab for the design and study of food systems and marketplaces and co-founder and director of Farm to Facts, which can be found at farmtofacts.org. In addition to his many published books, articles, and interviews, he serves as a well-known keynote speaker on the subject of food systems, public marketplaces, and street vendors, both nationally and internationally. Please welcome Alfonso Morales. Thank you so very much, Marissa. I sure do appreciate your kind introduction, and I'm particularly thankful to Fran and the Badger Talks team, Nick, uh, who organized this activity and the students who get to serve, uh, introducing speakers like myself, who, who our work is with and for students like Marissa, uh, whether they're in school or visitors like you all, wherever you're listening in from, I do appreciate uh, you coming and uh, listening to me speak about street markets and farmers markets and the like. So we, we thought about me telling a joke right now, but, but decided against that. And instead, uh, I'm gonna just convey to you a little story that perhaps makes, hopefully give you some idea of, of my thinking about farmer's markets and street markets. So there's two people walking down the street and it's a busy city street. And uh, one of the people says to the other, hey, did you hear that cricket? And the, the person, the other person says, Cricket, wow, how did you hear a cricket in all this tumult and all this activity? And the first person says to themselves, hmm, I could tell uh, my friend that it's my training, you know, as a zoologist and, and I've, I've listened for natural life all my life. And so I could tell my person about the training, but instead the first person digs into their pocket, grabs a, a big heavy coin, drops it on the ground and everybody on the street looks to see what fell and and the person says to his colleague people hear what they're listening for and it is the case that we pay attention to what we're listening for in life and one of the things that i work with my students to do in in community organizations in the united states and canada and and elsewhere is to help listen for the sense of society, for, for the heartbeat of society, that marketplaces, the farmers markets and outdoor marketplaces are currently and have been for centuries. So I'm very thankful again for the opportunity to visit with you all and to, to help show you a little bit about how the marketplaces play so many roles in society, economic, political, social roles. When we think of a market, when we're looking in a magazine, and the, and the illustrator wants to show community, what do they do? They show a market, they show a farmer's market where people are wandering around, observing each other, looking at some entertainment, picking up some information, not to say uh, food, right? And of course this image of the Dane County Farmer's Market is a great image because it shows the relationship of government to society. It reminds us that the two are in reciprocal relationship and that marketplaces it operationalized, they enact, they make possible so many of the things that government would like to see that a strong society needs. So uh, let me give you a, a quick overview of some of the things that we're seeing in the country today. Marketplaces are creative spaces. Vendors are finding ways to support society through their everyday business activities. The market organizations themselves are looking for ways to support society uh, by responding to the difficult circumstances that we're in, 
by trying to anticipate the need for people to interact with each other and to be able to engage each other productively in dialogue, even if they disagree, they can find ways to speak with each other about the different interests that they have. And of course, you know, marketplaces are still fun. You know, the people are still finding ways to, to, uh, to entertain themselves and each other in marketplaces, you know, all over the, all over the country. So this creativity has been going on a long time. And so I'd like to speak for a few minutes about the history of markets. I hope you can see this cartoon. We have a medieval castle and a knight going out to, uh, and the caption reads, the, if I didn't, the, the, the princess there says to the knight, if I didn't really need nutmeg, do you think I'd ask you to go out and get it? Come on, right? And it, it's, it is the case that, that uh, for hundreds and thousands of years, uh, trade was very, very important. Uh, but trade only happened when people were able to protect trade routes. So what happened was that uh, market, markets got formed and given special protection to enable trade in safe ways. And what did that trade then do? It created all kinds of interesting opportunities to extend culture and people across uh, countries, across uh, uh, political spaces that were becoming countries slowly, and across continents. So for instance, uh, we can think about the, how cosmopolitanism came about in the Greek marketplaces of the, of, of the, of, uh, uh, 3,000 years ago. Cosmopolitan, remember, is the universal polis. The universal people were born in marketplaces and through trade. And so uh, the Silk Road, right? Trading across continents. So of course that history is more recent here in the U.S. as well. And I'd like to just, from those earlier systems of exchange, what we had in the progressive era here in the U.S were social and political upheavals that gave, us, that gave us contemporary law and contemporary food systems, contemporary bureaucratic organizations. And those places were very important. The, 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 if you read reports, as I have written about and read of 100 years ago, 120 years ago here in the United States, cities like Chicago and Boston, New York, were creating markets in order to incorporate immigrants. They were creating markets to enhance food security. They were making employment opportunities available. Many of the same uh, questions and issues that cities are dealing with today, people were dealing with 100 years ago, and marketplaces were policy tools to answer these questions. So from those early days came markets as legitimate policy tools and modern retail systems began to grow up as well because technology and in, in through refrigeration, for instance, enabled us to have, uh, refer, uh, to enabled us to have grocery stores and refrigerated foods. So in the 1940s though, in the 1930s, 40s, 50s, 60s, retail changed completely. People became uh, used to going to grocery stores or other sorts of retail outlets to, to purchase their consumer goods. They abandoned the retail catalogs that many of you may remember, right? Likewise, we measure what we care about. And the US Census Bureau counted street vendors as an occupation category until 1940. So when occupation categories changed, there became less interest in marketplaces. Marketplaces eroded in their general importance retail activities increased in their importance. So nonetheless, marketplaces went on. Chicago's Maxwell Street Market, the Fulton Fish Market, the marketplaces all over the country continued nonetheless. Now more recently, over the last 20 years especially, uh, but over the last 40 or 50 years, we've had a lot of concerns with health, with the quality of our food, again, with immigration and employment. And so in these struggles, we have farmers markets growing all over the country. 
I don't know how many of you know this, but in the 19, 1970, 1968, the Berkeley Farmer's Market was one of the first of the new farmer's markets. Two years later, or I'm sorry, four years later, Dane County Farmer's Market here in Madison, Wisconsin. From there, Des Moines, Ann Arbor. Markets sprung up all over the country uh, in support of typically middle-class people who wanted the taste of the food that they remembered from their youth, right? And then in the, as the 80s and 90s went on, there became more of an interest in immigrant populations and employment and other sorts of things. And now, from this little point of explosion where we're at now, markets are uh, playing an essential role in society, securing food systems and employment opportunities in, uh, around the country as well. And what will happen next, we will see. So let's think about this current moment here in Wisconsin, the Dane County Farmers Market. We know this last Saturday here in Madison, there was a rally of white clothes for black lives. So the medical uh, uh, societies of Wisconsin, the Wisconsin Surgical Society, a number of other uh, medical organizations in the state held a big rally. A few hundred people at least were present th at that rally Saturday morning. Typically, they would have been uh, surrounded by 12,000 people <laughs> at any given hour walking around the, the Dane County Farmers Market. But instead, in light of the COVID crisis, what we have is the Dane County Farmers Market moving to an online platform and making available online purchasing and pickup there at the Alliant Energy Center. Very interesting. We have farmers market managers discussing this current moment, the COVID moment, and whether or not they should even open, right? On one of the listservs that, that I follow, there was the moral question of whether to keep farmers markets open or not. And as farmers markets are considered essential businesses here in Wisconsin and in many other states around the country, I thought to myself, well, how can we support these, uh, these markets and vendors? So I've engaged in a substantial, my team as well, my Kaufman Lab Farm to Facts team has engaged in significant dialogue with government uh, officials here in Wisconsin and elsewhere and been advising folks and having meetings with folks all over the country in support of their activities, uh, keeping those markets open, keeping, keep continuing to provide safe and delicious uh, fresh food to consumers enhance food security in communities, and also, of course, keep abreast of, uh, of government regulations and support communities in that way. So one of the things that we see is big creativity from markets. Market managers are finding all sorts of ways, for instance, to just keep hand sanitized, right? Another thing that we, we see uh, in markets is uh, move, is, uh, is, keeping social distance between vendors. Let me talk you through a little video here that was filmed just a, a few days ago in California with our partner uh, Agricultural Community Events in uh, Marin County, California. You notice the distance between the stands. You don't see many masks being used, but you see signage for folks to keep aware of their social distancing. You see hand, hand sanitizer for sale at the market. And of course, what farmer's markets are famous for, fresh, delicious produce. And of course, some distance there to ask the, the vendor for, to supply you with your particular, the particular product you're interested in. So I think that uh, you can see also social distancing in this graphic right here see the opportunity that people have to uh, to lay out physical space at a market to allow people to enjoy their products at the at the market however maintain some distance from each other and the online purchasing the curbside ordering now one of the things that i may not have mentioned at the outset but i should mention right now before we go any further is that i'm willing to take questions at any point from anyone at any point. So please don't hesitate to ask, okay? Okay. Uh, 
So one of the other things that my lab and students have done and then my farmer facts team has done is put together graphics for farmers markets to use around the country. Uh, and it, it, interestingly enough, we've had about 1,300 people, you can look at these things online, and we've had about 1,300 people engage the blog associated with these graphics. And, and I believe it's 100 downloads so far as of earlier today of a whole set of graphics for market managers to use in uh, producing signage to help keep visitors aware and of the different needs that, 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 that uh, markets are addressing and how it is that markets are addressing those, those needs. Uh, another thing that marketplaces have going on is they have a lot of outcomes associated with their work. Right now, you probably won't be surprised to find out that farmers markets around the country are enjoying record sales. Why are they enjoying record sales? Because folks are interested in supporting their local economy. Folks understand that the fewer miles food has to travel, not only is that better for the local economy, that improves uh, uh, local, uh, that it, it improves the quality of community life that they're enjoying. The community supported agriculture farms here in Dane County are completely sold out. And many of them have sold many more shares than they typically sell. Again, the interest is in supporting the local community, not just economically, but in terms of making a community more resilient. One of the things that I have found also kind of interesting is that when regulators go to markets, when a market says we're going to open and they go to their county health department and negotiate with their county health department, and then the county health department goes to visit the market, the market regulators are very surprised at how uh, willing markets are to create the sort of safe space for food consumption and for public gathering that you would like to see, that they'd hope to see from markets. And of course, throughout these slides, I've tried to demonstrate some of that creativity that market managers have. Now, another thing that I'd like to point out is that markets are often used for food security here in Wisconsin and around the country. And so by that, we mean that markets uh, support supplemental nutrition programs, SNAP benefits and senior citizen benefits are available at markets. And we did some work, my lab did some work with the support of American Family Insurance to, uh, with the Brown Deer Farmers Market there north of Milwaukee, where the relatively food insecure population and relatively uh, less usage of food security dollars at the farmers market. So we designed a program for them to execute at the market and they went from $500 of food security spending at the market in 2018 to more than $4,000 in 2019. And of course, this summer, I'm excited to see what comes of it. And the way that we know this, of course, is through our Farm to Facts uh, data collection toolkit, which supplies graphics like what you see right here before you. Now, that how we know is very, very important. And as a scientist, it is my role to support society in legitimately and reliably understanding how we know what we say we know. And so I have a team, my Kaufman lab team and farm to facts team at the UW actually is a number of students, undergraduate students, uh, graduate students and postdoctoral candidates, as well as colleagues around the country who work together as a team in support of farmers markets and any food systems activity where they have a desire to achieve their goals, but need academic support to achieve need some social science support to, to achieve their goals, that is what we're up to. And I, I would be remiss to say that we are, uh, we basically operate as a cost recovery program. And so I'm always looking for support. So if you're interested in supporting our program, I would appreciate deeply uh, you going to this uh, link and, and uh, supporting the, we, what we do with the money is pay students to help markets around the country achieve their goals. Whatever their goals are, we work on their behalf. This isn't the scientists working from the top down. It's society working with science in support of community goals. Okay, 
So uh, the to to summarize, I just wanted to say that that the same way I opened is the way I want to close. When you have an image of what community is, I would not be surprised if what you see is a farmer's market in your head. If what you see is a, a, a big uh, outdoor activity where people are dining together, as in these photos that I took at the same market, 20 years apart. The same outdoors uh, restaurant doing business in the support of their community and doing business in support of their own family as well. And marketplaces are these hotbeds. They're hotbeds of community. They are images of how society works together. Different social institutions work together on behalf of a uh, more robust society, of, on behalf of a more resilient society. So of course, I could go on and describe this in greater detail. I could do an academic talk. And let me just say to you, in a week, one week from yesterday, the 22nd of June, I will be delivering a keynote to a symposium of European scholars on the questions of marketplaces and street food. And of course, that talk will be much more academic. If you're interested, I'd be happy to, happy to share the link with you. It'll be at 9 o'clock in the morning, Madison time. Uh, and so uh, I, I, I'm thrilled, of course, though, that I got to, to speak with you all here today. And I'd look forward to, if there are any questions or comments, I'm certainly open for them. And uh, to hopefully leave you with a little bit of a laugh today, there I am in 1990 doing my dissertation research at Chicago's Maxwell Street Market. And I just want to acknowledge my team at the Kaufman Lab, especially here today, Maggie Tomaszek, who supported the creation of this slide deck for today. And uh, I, I, again, I just want to say thanks very much and ask for questions. So let me see here. We may have uh, people are tuning in from all over the uh, place, Eau Claire, Milwaukee, uh richland county jan green hello jen thank you very much so let me see there's a question from uh meg kilkenny a colleague of mine in, who works for university extension there in milwaukee and milwaukee is a very interesting city like many cities it has a, a coalition of farmers markets and meg supports the milwaukee farmers market coalition and she asks what are some of your all-time favorite farmers markets i have visited oh my goodness gracious so if any of you have been fortunate enough to get to visit Barcelona, Spain, the system of community markets in Barcelona is absolutely remarkable. It is completely integrated from, from local farms through distribution and food processing, the creation of all kinds of value-added products, meats, uh, jellies and jams, other products, all the way to the, to the 37 markets scattered throughout Barcelona and the, and the neighborhoods they serve. It is a completely integrated system of markets. As, as a system of markets, that has got to be a favorite of anyone who studies markets. I think it's, if, if you ever have a chance to visit, you've got to go there. I, I think that the Dane County Farmers Market, the country's largest producer-only market, is truly an example of uh, state and society working together. I think the Fondi Market in Milwaukee uh, and the service they've done to the immigrant community there is notable uh, for the many years of service to immigrant communities in and around Milwaukee. The Hmong farmers there are produce amazing, amazing produce. And I would recommend folks a field trip to Milwaukee is called for. Uh, the South Milwaukee market's a very interesting market for its combination of entertainment and, and food in that small municipality in the inside of Milwaukee. Uh, the, hmm, goodness gracious, there's so many. The green market system in New York also, fascinating. But so what do I think that markets will look like in 100 years? Hmm. I would not be surprised if a hundred years from now, a farmer's market today would be as recognizable a hundred years, a hundred years from now as they are today. A hundred years ago, if you look at 
photos of markets from 100 years ago, you would be completely, they would be completely recognizable. It's because face-to-face -face trade and the sort of social life that we enjoy living together is, is I think, will still be part of our fundamental, of what makes us human 100 years from now. Uh, another question, Dorothy from Denmark and Melanie from Northern California are tuning in. Oh, hello. Hello, Melanie. Welcome from NoCal. Appreciate you coming in. Let's see. Do I have contacts in Eau Claire? Oh, my goodness. I'd have to think about this. Hmm. Uh, near Eau Claire in Osceola, I'm working with some farmers on a greenhouse gas metric for small farmers who sell, who do direct marketing in community-supported agriculture and farmers markets because we all want to know how it is that uh, local food can help make our communities more resilient, not just in terms of food security, but in terms of climate change and climate change mitigation. How it is that, that farms can help sequester carbon in the soils and how it is that farm management practices of local direct market producers can support society in that way. Um, so in Eau Claire, I'd have to think a little bit, but working with farmers uh, in that part of the state, it's ongoing. Are there, do we have other thoughts? Nancy Kelly, West Allis Market is the best. West Allis, you bet. Monroe, you bet. A uh, 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 little story about Monroe. When, when uh, I don't know, three or four years ago, the Monroe Market used farm to facts for a couple of years because they wanted to get a sense of, of, of they, they thought that there were many more people visiting the market than were in the community. So we did the visitor survey and some other details and dis discovered that about half the visitors on any given day in the Monroe Farmers Market were coming from Greater Chicago. And doesn't that make sense? You know, you're living in Greater Chicago. You say to yourself, there's 5 million people in Greater Chicago. You say to yourself, that's a beautiful Saturday. It, you know, I think I'll get out. Uh, take the family out uh, to drive around southern Wisconsin, you come to Monroe, you see the famous cheese places, and what do you run into? You run into the farmer's market. There you go. Uh, farmer's markets are truly are multifunctional. They serve communities in many, many ways. Uh, Jane Bird, what, does, what role does the marketplace play in the promotion of novel vegetables? Uh, excellent question. Novel vegetables are very important. You may have heard about seed savers, right? And organizations that are, are preserving the genetic material of seeds for human use tens and hundreds of years from now. Well, in Tucson, Arizona, there's an organization called Native Seeds that has for 30 years maybe uh, been uh, 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 enlisting the cooperation of citizens like me and you in, produce, in, in planting those seeds and in uh, preserving the genetic variation of Southwestern seeds, of native seeds of in, the indigenous peoples of basically Northern Mexico and the Southwestern United States, that geographic area. And so when you plant a, a, a seed that from a, from a plant that was cultivated previously, it was known to people 100 years ago or 200 years ago, but less known today. When we bring that to the market, people think, wow, that's a new thing. Well, it's the result of hard work of organizations and people working together to preserve that genetic variety, to preserve that taste, that taste of place. And that is one of the things that I'm excited to support by working with farmers markets. Uh, marketplaces are indeed, to tag on to Jan's comment, they, uh, they help promote novel vegetables and the production techniques that preserve that genetic variety for us all. Uh, Linda, Linda Literal. There is a thriving farm market in Eau Claire, but, our slides would, my, but your slides would be helpful to encourage social distancing. Well, L Linda, please have a look at our graphics as well. At the farm2facts.org webpage, you can see some blogs about social distancing and the graphics that are available for free 
uh, to markets, to encourage uh, uh, activity uh, uh, that preserves uh, community health, but makes possible healthy economy, healthy food, right? We want to think about health in many dimensions. Uh, many academics use the idea of one health to talk about animal health, food production health, human health, etc. So, Linda, let me ask you to, to turn to that blog. And anybody's welcome to it, of course. Let's see. Uh, how can we give credit to the indigenous people who have done? Yes, good question. Well, in part, that's we have a new blog we're posting trying to give credit to farmers. We often forget how I'm sure this audience is well aware of farmers and the work that, that they do in bringing food to us. But because of the large distance and the number of hands that food often passes through, not everybody's aware of the complexities of contemporary farm work. How do we give uh, credit to farmers as well as the indigenous farmers that we think about from hundreds of years ago? Native Seeds, that organization I mentioned in Tucson, is part of that. Uh, the, there are other organizations that do that work. I'm, I'm thinking of the uh, in Kansas, Grasslands Organization. I apologize. It's going to slip my mind. I apologize. I can't remember right now. But indeed, for hundreds of years, Native peoples have crossbred products that gave us contemporary products that we have today. Maize, right? Thousands of years ago, Central Americans cultivated tesuina, right? This single kernel, multi kernel uh, corn that has become our, the tens of varieties of production corn that, that farmers grow today. So in any case, I think uh, th that I, my time may be coming to a close. I'm not entirely sure, but I certainly appreciate the engagement you've given. You've honored me and my team with your presence, and I'm thankful for you. And uh, I hope that, that there's something that we can do. Ah, no, we have some more time. So let me see. I think I have five or six more minutes at least. Are there other questions, folks? I've got, I can take five more minutes worth for thoughts or questions. Let me see if I can uh, identify if I've got the right thread of thinking here and have a drink while I'm doing it. You know, oh, well, here's, come, here's something in just a moment, but uh, another thought occurs to me. I am a professor in the Department of Planning and Landscape Architecture here at the University of Wisconsin-Madison. The department does a number of public service, public outreach activities around the state, around the country. I would urge you to have a look at our department webpage for, our, for what my colleagues are up to. It's fascinating, I can tell you. You would probably be surprised at how your lives are probably touched by the work that we do in planning for everything from transportation systems to food systems. And so feel free to take a look. I also want to remind you, have a look at the Farm to Facts webpage. I'd appreciate you considering supporting the work of the lab. Uh, we, we think that we do valuable work currently with markets in Canada and the US. And uh, 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 of course, every bit of support we can get, we put to work on behalf of students like Marissa who introduced me in supporting their education and advancing their aspirations to work professionally in this field. Let's see here. Ah, oh, Kelly. So, so Kelly Milan asks, Mark says, reminds us that markets are an everyday happening in Israel. Will that ever happen here? Ah, this is a very good question. And I think that it's an important question to ask. The structure of markets in Europe is certainly different than that in here in the US, as well as elsewhere in the country, in Asia, Latin America, markets as sort of everyday occurrences are much more common than they are here in the US. 
This is largely to do with that history that I spoke about where grocery stores, the technology and transportation changes of the last hundred years made grocery stores our go-to mode of food acquisition. However, this is not necessarily always gonna be the case. Farmers markets have gone from very few 50 years ago to about 9,000 across the US. Here in Dane County, starting about this week, they're, they're in, a, in a typical year, there are 27 markets, virtually one every day of the week. However, you would have to drive around to get to them. So will one market operate six or seven days of the week here in Dane County? I look forward to them trying it. We will see what happens when, when that happens. Uh, what can I say? We don't know for sure, but it's a good question. Another question, Jane Bird. What percentage of vendors at Marketplace are immigrants? Good question, Jane. I think this is a very important question. The USDA has this question. The United States Department of Agriculture has this question. And since uh, I work with USDA quite a bit, I built the, those USDA metrics and questions into my Farm to Facts data collection portal and toolkit. Now, for any particular market, that's going to vary. And how many vendors are immigrants uh, uh, kind of depends on, the, on where we're talking about. Uh, I suspect that, so in short, let me just tell you briefly, I don't know for sure. We would have to look at, at a particular market to know how many markets, and they would have to be collecting data, but they would want to tell that story. What we're trying to do, what we try and do with Farm to Facts is enable market managers to tell more robust stories about their market. And that, that telling of stories is what enables those markets to get more support. And hopefully when they get more support, they can open more frequently and our local food system is more robust and resilient for that work of opening more frequently. These things get woven together. So there we go, Jan. Uh, or, or Miss Bird, Jay Bird. I apologize for uh, getting your name wrong, but I do see that now it looks like my time has come to an end. I do appreciate y'all's interest. I uh, feel free to email me. Feel free to come to a more academic talk in a week if you want to hear a more academic talk. Uh, and uh, feel free to reach out to me through uh, info at farm2facts.org. Uh, we'd be happy to address other questions you might have. Meanwhile, what can I say? I wish you all health, wealth, and time to spend them both. Okay, take care.